I'm sure it's no big deal. Chip Roy is with us. Uh, I want to talk to him about the SAVE Act. Uh, Chip, how are you, sir? Doing great, Glenn. I wish I was with you, but uh, but I'm happily in uh, Austin, Texas. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, Austin's, eh, it is Austin, but it's still Texas. Um, so, Chip, yeah. talk to me about the SAVE Act. This is, I, I, I cannot believe that the Democrats are standing against this in a time when we all are worried about the election integrity. And they're saying we don't need to pass this this act because we already have laws on the books that say non-citizens can't vote. How disingenuous is that? Well, it's disingenuous because, as you know, as I know, as your listeners know, Democrats have no interest whatsoever in ensuring election integrity. And in fact, they want the opposite. They want non-citizens to vote. That's what this is all about. They've effectively said so. Now, they're going to, during the campaign season, they're going to hide behind, oh, there's no problem here, right? You heard uh, Mark Kelly from Arizona go, oh, this is a solution in search of a problem. Meanwhile, you have 6,500 non-citizens cleaned off the Texas rolls in the last couple of years. You have 6,300 cleaned off Virginia's rolls. You have thousands cleaned off of other states' rolls. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Because if we actually had the tools to go, you know, discover the problem, which the SAVE Act would provide by requiring that when you register to vote, this is a novel concept, plan. you can't believe this crazy stuff, this radical stuff, that when you register to vote, you just need to demonstrate you're a citizen. Um, Democrats oppose it. Now, I will note five Democrats voted for our bill in July when we passed it. All Republicans voted for it. But again, this is all about control. That's what the climate agenda is all about. That's what the environmental agenda is all about. They're all connected. That's where they're tearing the dams down. This is all about control, empowering the government. This is all of the Marxism, the communism, the statism, the totalitarianism that Reagan fought, but that we are not remotely close to completing. They're on the mark yes. because they live among us. That's the problem. So how can they say that there is no problem here in Arizona in particular in 2020? 11,600 no proof of citizenship required federal ballots were cast in Arizona. Joe Biden won Arizona by 10,457 votes. So there were more non-citizens voting, and we know the non-citizens almost always vote for the Democrats. How is this not a problem? Well, it's not a problem if you're a Democrat who wants power. That's the point. I think the thing that I, you know, you know, you, you, you opened this segment talking about those dams. You know, we could do a whole segment and you talk about it all the time about what's happening in the United Kingdom, the takeover that's yes. happening there, what's happening in Ireland, what's happening in Germany. Um, it, it's real. This isn't fake. It's not like the churches are just magically, oh, yeah, those churches aren't burning in France. It's not like, oh, yeah, that church in Ireland last week that caught fire. Oh, that's just a coincidence. Like it, This is happening and it's happening right now. The only reason we're slightly not as bad as Europe is the massive oceans on either side of us. But with the yes. increase of air travel, with the porous border, America is only a nanosecond behind Europe. So our whole point on the SAVE Act is to call their bluff and to force the question. Now, I, I got to say, because I know that some of your listeners, strong, awesome conservatives, are hearing a few of my conservative colleagues and some pundits say, gosh, why are we going to do a continuing resolution? We hate continuing resolutions. Why would we support that? Well, here's why. I don't like continuing resolutions. I think they're garbage. Except if I have the chance right now heading into an election season, and I know we're not going to pass all 12 appropriations bills because a lot of our colleagues refuse to cut spending. Democrats won't work with us. We can't get all Republicans across the finish line. We've only passed five of the 12. My theory is this. I don't want to have a lame duck CR in December. That's mm -hmm. what the appropriators, that's what Mitch McConnell, that's what they want. They want that pressure of Christmas. Christmas time. They want yep. a Christmas tree bill. So let's mm -hmm. do a CR in March. Let's attach the SAVE Act. Let's tell our Democratic colleagues, guys, we have funded your precious god-awful government that we hate the EPA, and we hate all of the stuff with the FBI, we hate the Secret Service failing to do its job, and we hate the open borders. We're funding your government at current levels through March. We're going to fight and fix this when Donald Trump wins in November and we have the House and the Senate. 
We'll see you on Election Day in November. But you're going to vote for this with election integrity or you're going to be the ones who decide to shut the government down. I'm happy Republicans. I am thrilled to have that. You don't have a country if you have illegals voting. You won't have a country if you can't get this basic thing down, that citizens are the only ones to vote. Uh, And if it's already been done, then they should have no problem voting for it. No problem whatsoever. You, you just you would look at the other side. If that were true, you would look at the other side and you go, if that's what you want, if that's what it's going to take. OK, but they know it's not true. And the Republicans, do you really think the Republicans are going to have the spine to stand up for this? Well, I think that all depends on President Trump. And I don't mean that as a question about his fortitude. We know his fortitude. Right. I mean, he got shot and he stood right back up. I think yeah. the question here is whether or not the president is going to decide that it is in the strategic interest of him and the party and the House and the Senate for us to have, carry on the shutdown fight from October 1st to Election Day. If he wants to do that and if we, you know, that's the right thing for us to do, I'm all in. Let's go. Um, but we'll make a decision on October 1. You know what I think about it. Hell, I, you know, I, know. I would pick a fight on bigger I things. I would have HR2 on it. I would. I would defund some stuff, and I would send them a funding bill, and I'd go send it to the American people and say, here are our priorities. If Democrats don't like it, make that the Election Day issue. But we Look, I'm going to be blunt. I'm going to be honest. I don't lie. Uh, we have some colleagues who are in tight districts who will come into our conference and say, guys, I can't win the election if we have a shutdown and a quarter of my constituents or 10 percent or whatever are either not getting you know, their paycheck because they're a government employee or they're not getting – some benefit or their whatever. So we're going to have that fight inside the Republican conference in September. I would fight. I always will pick that fight, but I'm happy to try to figure out how we navigate to get to November 5th. But the starting place for that conversation is get the government spending past Christmas. So the appropriators and the uniparty swamp dwellers on both parties can't screw the American people and pick a fight on the save act. I'll trust President Trump to land the plane strategically. You know, do we come up with some solution on September 30th and they campaign on it? Do we uh, let it shut down for a week or two or all the way to November 5th? I'm game for any of those options, provided that we fight, provided that we put up a fight, demonstrate the fight, and campaign on it. Democrats are taking your country away, people. We should act like it. I'm fine if it shuts down. But I'm going to defer to some degree on President Trump and how he wants to lead. He's the leader of the party yeah. right now. Yeah, no, the leader has to he has to be part of it. If he if he waffles at all, it'll all fall apart. How are we doing in uh, Congress for the elections? It looks not so great. Well, you know, look, here's the one thing I'll tell you, because a lot of the people that you and I um, our friends, your listeners, they will come to me out on the campaign trail and they'll say, well, why should I bother voting? I mean, they're, you know, they're going to rig the election. Well, there's one way to guarantee we lose the election, and that's to not show yes. up. So you have yes. to show up. The second thing is we've got to be too big to rig. President Trump has said that. He's right. Yes. Show up in yes. overwhelming numbers. Demonstrate that we want our country back. If all of your listeners, families, friends, uh, you know, church mates, all the people that they drag their family and their kids and everything, vote. We'll win, and we'll win in overwhelming numbers. Let's overwhelm them. Now, I know that's all sort of big talk. The, the third point really is we've got to stand for something. And I want Republicans to be united in this in the fall. That's why I think having the CR and the SAVE Act is a good fight. But it is a tight election. I'm going to tell you, it's tighter than it should be. That's because we have a divided country. It's because of our education system has been corrupting our youth now for at least two or three generations. It's because of some of the questions of all of the ballots uh, and all of the mail-in ballots and the ballot harvesting and all of that. We've improved it some since 2020. Uh, you know, Texas, Georgia, uh, other states that have notably made some changes. Wisconsin's still not great. Pennsylvania's still a question. Arizona's kind of some good, some bad. So we're going to have to do what we need to do to make sure we have poll watchers. I know the RNC, Laura Trump, Michael Watley, they've been working on making sure we've got the lawyers in place. We were flat-footed in 2020. But I'm just telling everybody on the ground, get out and vote. Overwhelm them. Right. And that's the best way to guarantee the outcome that we need to have. But the short answer to your question is the presidential is a, is a coin, coin toss lean Trump. 
The House is a probable that we end up roughly where we are with a very thin majority, but we could we could get you. The Senate we should take, but it'll be fifty one, two or three. So we gotta do our work to bump boost those this numbers and make sure Ted Cruz wins and me and everybody else. You know, when when you have Kamala Harris uh bussing people in to I think it was New Hampshire for her rally, uh yep. I mean like thirty buses of people were shipped in from another state that shows you something that shows you that this is not real. Uh, and you know, I'm hoping that the discouragement of the Democrats, that they start seeing these things, uh, you know, there, there's so many encouraging signs that we are right at the tipping point here where just a little more of this and it's over for the Democrats. But if they win in uh, this fall, Chip, I, d- I don't know how America makes it. Uh, it. I mean, everything that they've been planning for this global government, all of this stuff, it hits next year. Yeah, I mean, Glenn, I could go down a parade of horribles. We all, we, we know about the 5.5 million people that have been released. We know about the fentanyl. We know about the international organizations, the 2 million gotaways. We know about the cartel's reach. We know about what you're talking about, the United Nations, the World Health Organization, all of the crap they're doing, what they're doing, reparations. You know what nobody's talking about? Record numbers of citizens that have been made and processed during this administration, moving people through the citizenship path. I don't know who they are or where they're from. We're trying to get that information. They want to remake America. This election is a worldview election. This is about your way of life. This isn't about any personalities one way or the other. If you love Trump, if you're not a big fan, I don't really give a damn. What I care about is we need to save freedom. President Trump loves America, loves freedom. He wants us to have this country for us and for the people. He doesn't have to be doing this. And, you know, look, I've, I've been on your show where I've disagreed with him. I don't, I don't you know, yeah. I don't mince words. But, but Opposition in all things. It's required. It's required. Yeah. This is not a hard question. We have a job to do. Let's go save our country for our kids and grandkids. Because if Kamala Harris is the president on January 20th, we're in real trouble. We're in epic trouble. We're in 1850s type trouble. And we've got to make sure that we do our part to solve that problem right now by overwhelming uh, the Democrats at the polls. Don't listen to all of the naysayers. It can and probably will be a close election. I hope we stretch it out and run through the tape. But the only way to do that is show up now. Um, yep. you know, that's, Chip, that's the uh, thank you so much. You Please stay in touch with me when, uh, yep. if there's anything the audience can do, please, the SAFE uh, Act, uh, SAVE Act has got to go through. All right. Um, let me tell you about our sponsor this half hour. It's American Finance.